<laughs> they got rid of that quick, like, Rob. Hey, they got rid of the message in the twerk music. Yeah, immediately they got rid of it, Rob Hayes. So we start over. Okay, keep all this. We are gonna keep it all. <laughs> Big tippers on Patreon. Shout out to the Patreon. Mm-hmm. Y'all keep comedy going. Oh yeah. Yeah, they used to have a message in the twerk music. The mer- That's crazy. This is when all the drug dealers had S10s with the kid on them and blazers. Okay. That's the speaker? Yeah. Well, no, no. Uh, the, the Chevy blazers. Like, Chevy blazer dropped to the ground mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with the little Ferrari kits on them. It was like, we used to draw them all the time uh, and stuff. Like, successful drug dealers had kitted out, like, trucks and stuff back like then. Like Blade Brown. It was the exact that type of stuff. It was Dang. Blade Brown was like the extreme of that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see that. I didn't see quite that one. That was he was he he OD'd on that. He right. was crazy on that. One. We was like, was I like, saw the movie because of the truck. We was we saw the truck in the preview. Like we going this. <laughs> I'm nine. I'm going you, this. I don't you, care what the movie. You saw about. A classic for the truck. The truck, bro. <laughs> the truck, bro. This is when everybody had like Miami Hurricane baseball jerseys on, and yeah, this Atlanta was still Miami, very heavy influence base. You know, these are my uncles and them. Okay, this so, uncle who sold dope and had the little the little Gucci bag, the little Gucci handbag with the cocaine in it. So when Miami had base, like it started Atlanta in Miami. Was, Atlanta was just like Atlanta was still Atlanta, but it was like MC Shadi was like out of the Luke camp, and he his DJ yeah. was DJ Toon. And that was, MC Shadi was kind of like what I remember as a kid. Not, you know, his stuff, you know what I'm saying? That, yeah. That was like the, yeah, that's, shout out to DJ Toon. But that was like the early Atlanta sounds to me. That King Edward okay. J, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. Kilo Ali was like our first kind of like Jay-Z type of figure. In my, if I'm going to say, say Jay-Z in the okay. early. Okay. He was, more, he was like Nelly before Nelly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The best, that's a better description. You know what I'm saying? I feel like all Kilo's kids came, like, way later. Kilo. Like, I feel like the swag era, like, those are, like, Kilo's. Those like, are Kilo's babies. babies. Everybody's yeah. Kilo's kids. Everybody okay. is. Okay. Everybody's Kilo's kids, bro. Mm. Everybody is Edward J's kids. You know, King Edward J, you know what I'm saying? Mixtape, you know, the okay. originator. You know, I came up in a boot camp. You know what I'm saying? We together. We did Monte. That was my first... You know, I, I let you. We gonna do a podcast, right? We doing a, <laughs> we doing a podcast. I'm taking. I be taking over like I'm no, doing my podcast. No, I'm I like, like so. I like hey. learning sometimes. You know, I like, like that you have the, the the gray Atlanta Braves jersey. Right, this is I the, got to the Andre from Outcast. Hey, I, exactly. It's, it says. He got the Deion Sanders. It says Deion on it. I don't know how hard the gray one is to find. The gray one is not an easy get. No, it's not. It's not. But to me, that was the hardest one. I hated that it was the road jersey. Did you know Diddy made him wear the jersey? It's light enough to be a home jersey. Did you know Diddy made him put the jersey on? No. He wanted to wear I know he directed the video. No, no, he told him to take his shirt off. He told him, he told Dre to go shirtless. And he was, Dre wanted to wear a Timberland sweatshirt. And they were like, uh, no, this week. You got to make it look like Atlanta. Like this, mm. you know, this is your, but this your video. It needs to show your community. KP does it better. He tends it better, but I just okay. I, I watch a lot of docs, and then I know them a lot of them dudes, man. So I do <laughs> like that they wore the like Braves jersey, and I feel like it made that video timeless. And and the thing about that video, the Braves didn't change for a long time. They, they had the same uniform, so well, it just and, you know. And that video is we talking about Outcast uh, players ball. Like if y'all mm-hmm. didn't think because we had skip content. You know, for the for, it's a lot of white people listening. I know. I mean, it's it's everybody <laughs> listening. We yeah. got listeners all over. We got the a lot world. of young listeners who don't yeah. know the context of our because we go deep Atlanta. Me and you go deep we Atlanta, go deep and we, Atlanta. we skip the subject sometimes. So right, he's talking about the Outcast, the first Outcast video. Uh, mm-hmm. Dre had on that video. He actually had this jersey on with the turquoise and black and white Dion's. Okay. He didn't have the ones that the diamond turf that every the, the regular colorway. He had the other one. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. I remember that vividly. You know, when you broke, you remember all the name brand stuff. And right. You draw, you draw it. Back then, you had to draw what you liked. <laughs> that was. I guess there was a lot for, of people right? drawing shoes. Yeah. I, used, no, I had that a page of logos yeah. in my folder in like third grade. I used mm-hmm, to just draw all mm-hmm. the logos: Nike, Starter, you know, Reebok. Yeah. <laughs> Champion. Champion for sure. Get them a, the Adidas lined up right. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. You got to do the Adidas flower. Everybody does the Adidas flower in their notebook. 
<laughs> oh, the flower. Okay, yeah, okay, the, the, okay. The, the, you know the stripe, the the, the 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 stripe triangle is the new. That was like probably the end of the late nineties. Right, right, right. The flower no, is yeah. the one. <laughs> yeah, that that might be an age gap thing. It I, is I was gap. when they were trying to get the flower out of here. Yeah, they was they the was trying to sign Kobe and all that. They signed Kobe and, and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, they had a, the Adidas equipment area when you came. Mm-hmm. EQT, they need to bring them sure. back. Bring back the Adidas equipment with the sock with the boot. They, I think they did once with and the turquoise it, and it boot. Flopped, and it, man, but then they don't was... never they don't never like put stuff out in a way where people could get context. Because I follow all them pages. Sometimes we trade yeah, each yeah, other the old school. stuff um, where, where, like, they have old pictures of people wearing sneakers. And those EQTs was, like, that, that was, that was, was a like thing. a get it was, fresh sneaker. It was an era, yeah. yeah. And they, you know what they forget about? They forget about them street ball Adidas. Remember Adidas? Remember everybody was mm. doing, like, a black top version? Remember they had the black mm-hmm, top mm-hmm. Reebok. But Black the street ball pumps. Adidas was fresh because they had Nike the big, Air Raid. They had a big old rubber on the top part, like it had extra rubber on it. I guess I don't know for, okay. for open outside, but they never retro those. Man, I never saw an Adidas Run Ball. <laughs> I think they might have. They might have put it with something else. They might have took something and put the Run Ball with it. Maybe. But yeah, maybe. they got to do it. They got to do it. All the way retro. Think, yeah, you got to retro it all the way. We got Ronnie Jordan in the building. Yes, good to be in the building. Yes. The first comedian ever to pass me a microphone. Yes. Uh, my first time on stage uh, in Athens, Georgia. Yes. It's my second home. Changed my life. Ronnie told my parents you could make money in comedy. <laughs> and then they, they really didn't ask too many questions after that. Ronnie had it. His name on it on his chain, so they believed him. <laughs> <laughs> a big ass gold chain, chain with your said name on Ronnie it. Ronnie Jordan, they were like, "All right, well, <laughs> hey, he's, he's in good hands. He's gonna be okay." <laughs> well, shoot, I'm glad, man. You turned out, man. Me and my wife see you on stuff. We see your name on like a war show. We be sitting there in front of the TV. Like, oh, Rob, hey, that's hey, our man. first. That's our first child right there. That's our first boy right there, Rob. Yeah, I just remember the right session used to come on. You and KJ used to. Mm-hmm. Come over there, man. Mm-hmm. And to me, I, I understand early. I understood early that you got to get around some young energy to kind of okay. know what the hell is going on. And and I was I was in the middle of my college run. I was doing all the colleges and I'm buying sneakers. So people my age wasn't really tapped in anyway. They was, but it was like I was always looking for just you know if I see somebody funny and they cool, man. Come on, man. Let me tell you something. They yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So That's y'all was the thing. pretty cool. You had good energy, bro. You was cool. I, I, I don't bring comedians to my house. Like you was one. You were maybe about I four. Has been in my house over probably twenty some years. You know what I'm saying? So. But that's something I kept with me. I didn't, you know, I was, when I was like living with my mom and doing comedy at night, I wasn't bringing everybody to the house. You don't. You know that's like you, it's, you got. We like Batman. You got to have mm-hmm. a layer. You got to have mm-hmm. somewhere to rest and be yourself and come up with this shit. You got to right. come up with it somewhere. And I didn't. I didn't want to like comedy to infiltrate my family's life. You know. Oh like, yeah, I that just, gets. That's I've seen it before. Cause yeah. One relative start going to comedy shows without you and shit. You like hold right, on, what the, right. Oh, what you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted it to be my own thing. I leave, I do it. You know, you guys hear about it from me. The, what the made way you pick I, comedy over school? Like you were all the way at UGA doing doing it. Like you were doing the plan. Uh, was it always to do comedy? What was your What would you go to school for? I went to school for journalism. Me too. And I and I thought I was going to be a journalist, but that was really me, like giving up on the arts. Okay, and and feeling like okay, this is the only thing that I can do and my, uh, like, I, people won't ask me to do a backup plan. Like, I could I could strive for journalism my whole life and fall somewhere in it and nobody will be like, oh, man, you need to just give up and do this. Like, you could just, you just do that. There are careers in that. And, and what I learned through trying to do journalism is that there's a lot of people like that. There's a lot of people that are behind the scenes that want to be on their talent. Yeah. They just like, you know, it takes a lot to go on stage, bro. It's a yeah. lot. It's a lot. I've seen like CEOs and stuff, take comedy courses mm-hmm, of, mm-hmm. You know, just to be able to talk to a crowd and be, and 
Talking to a crowd is one thing, and connecting with strangers is a whole other thing. Like, comedians yeah. got, a, got a tendency to take over the room whenever they go somewhere or just be a light in a room or a place yeah. when it's time, when it's time to, or even when it's not mm-hmm. time to. So that kind of, you know, that confidence kind of takes everything over the top. Like, if you're an educated person already, if you got a little confidence and a little sauce, a little comedy sauce, yeah, limitless. <laughs> so I, um, I didn't get on any of the, the new shows at school. Did you audition? I, I auditioned. Is there a Rob Hayes audition tape for UGA News? There's probably, probably somebody find me that tape. I but need it. It's it's not good, and you know, but also I just um, didn't, you know, I w- I wasn't doing well in that, and then I found my way on stage doing poetry and making funny poems, and getting laughs was addictive. It is very addictive. Like, like that was the fun part. Like, I, I enjoyed presenting in class and doing that stuff. But when stuff was funny, when stuff got a laugh, when stuff got a reaction out of people, I valued and liked that more than necessarily what I was talking about. To okay. the point where I was like, you know, I'm constantly thinking about what I'm going to do next right. at a poetry night. And then that turned into me trying jokes. So that so, how long between your poetry decision and then me me seeing you at that comedy night was that like was that alone? It might be two years, but it's not like it's sporadic. It's but you like had your me, whole family at I'm the comedy just night. Doing it when there's the the poetry nights. It's not like I'm every night searching for anything to do. Got it. Got it. You know, I'm you know. Discovering music, I'm you know doing schoolwork. I'm, you're growing. You, yeah, you, I'm you're just, on your journey. You're just I'm just, doing stuff. Yeah, I'm just. I'm a kid. I'm existing in the world, <laughs> and then I meet you. You say you have to do this every night. Something clicks in me, and it's like that makes sense. We were on a, a little league baseball team. We had practice four nights a week for sure. When we played football, we had practice five nights a week and games on Saturdays. Why wouldn't we need to practice stand up every night? Right. And so then from that, the challenge was like, okay, I'm in my last year of college. How am I going to figure out how to perform? Because it's not a comedy club here. So then it's like, you told me host everything, everything that comes to your school. If you're a comedian in college, don't let them come to your school without offering your assistance to right. host. Because comedians who visit schools are always looking for some kind of student to break the ice. Because I love putting people up. It's great. It's ain't it the best? It's great. Yeah. Let, you know why I do that at colleges? I do it to this day. Yeah. At, at a co- you know why I do that? I I imagine it's like you you kind of you know there's advantages to somebody being on stage ahead of you. You kind of see what they like, what they don't like, but also you know, you know that person's going to be excited to be there, bring people they're excited to see their friend on stage. I do it at colleges because if this dude is terrible, now you get to see what a real comedian does. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wasn't going to say that. I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> no, I wasn't no, no. going to imply, 50, you know. Well, it's, what, it's a 50-50 50 shot. It's like right. either, either he's going to be horrible and I'm going to come up and, and, and clean up the mess or he's going to be great. Right. And we found a new comedian, and I'm going to just, if he asks me, I'm going to tell him what to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you are when you are a professional, I do feel like you're used to following incredible comedians all the time. So there's like, there's, there's never the, the a downside to somebody doing well. Right. But also, if they don't do well, cleanup is that much more, it, you know. And sometimes kids don't respect you when you come straight on the stage. It's like, That's true. Especially if they haven't seen you or anything. That's or, true. It's like now we got a we in a we in a, a cloudy era, so it's like if they don't know you, it's really a little funky attitude, especially in a lot of HBCUs. But mm-hmm. the, the funniest part is don't nobody know y'all either. That's K Dub. K Dub does that joke. Yeah. Don't nobody know. And the the thing is, it's like I tell our comedians, these niggas is musty. <laughs> In college, you know, if you remember the smells of college, I don't care what's going on. It's like, you know, somebody just got the the pheromones popping for sure. Somebody just got got through hooping. They really going to try to be funny. Communal showers. If you live on campus, the shower is connected to other showers. So it's not the ideal just like take a long time in the shower 
situation. You showering in shower shoes. Yeah, you know, it's like so, jail. It's like it's so like so. There's that. Also, there's the all day of everything. Yeah, it wasn't to my adult life I realized how crazy it is to just like get dressed in the morning and never come and back. Just all day. <laughs> And just, you know, be out in the sun. Balls doing just stuff hot. Your balls are like, bro. And then, like, I would, and I was somebody that would, like, look nice. And you got to so go take that, that midday those shower. Those are the worst clothes to wear if you're going to be out all day. And walking on campus, walking yeah. up hills, walking, mm-hmm. maybe some mud. It might rain. It's mm-hmm. like, you have to be on a mission in college. Like, the right. trip is going to suffer, but. Yeah, when I went to Fort Valley, it was a lot of people fresh, but people find a way to make time and change and all that shit. That shit cool for the first semester of your freshman year, but when you realize we is up here to do work, right? <laughs> you get the sweatpants you like. It's mm-hmm, about three, mm-hmm. four pants sweatpants rotation, and a couple hoodies, and you, you know, what I'm saying you figured it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. look nice out. Look nice when it's time look to nice go. When you save go your out. credit. Save, save your outfit. Save the drip. Right. Save the sauce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for that first night, man, that that I, mm-hmm. I remember that that was at the office too, and, the I, office and I hosted lounge, that yep. room. I'll never forget because I live right down the street, and I mm-hmm. just and I'm still at the mantra of you still got to practice. And I live so far from all the comedy nights, and one of the comedians I met was like, "They're doing a spot over here." And the host, the owner of the girl whose room it is, would love to have you. This I was making a lot of money at the time, but it yeah. was like I still needed a gym. To get this shit off and see if it still work, you mm-hmm, know what I'm saying? Or like, mm-hmm. if it don't work in front of a small crowd, it's definitely gonna work in front of a big crowd. And I need, right? I need diverse crowds so I can make sure I'm on point in front of anybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Athens provides you know that type of stuff, but it's been a while since I've been up in Athens. I've been kind of busy lately, so okay. <laughs> hey. uh, uh, busy is good. Shout out to the writer striker. Hopefully it's over. Shout out to the actors. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to they the pulled, actors. They got up and left the table. <laughs> The, the studio execs left the meeting. Hey, you know. They, they can't believe that we don't want to get exploited. Yeah. <laughs> well, they said they came with a worse offer than before. I don't know. Yeah, they, they quoted prices that were 60% higher than what they said. It's like they just were putting the cap on there. and I, It's funny hearing billionaires complain. It's like, my boy. We, yeah. We held the line this long. We'll hold but the see, line. that's the thing. Some of these people aren't the billionaires. Oh. Which got me thinking so that the billionaires back. are like hyping them up, like, "Hey, you know, like when they get back, I got y'all." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they threw Drew Barrymore out there, and all about everybody tore her up in the comments. They're mm-hmm. like, "Bitch, if you don't," <laughs> they was tearing Drew hey. Barrymore up, bro. But I don't, yeah. I don't like no bootlicking trustee myself. Anyway, like mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. if you're in the union, be in the union. If you're in the union, be in the union. Be in the but union, bro. It's a lot of people that work hard. A lot of crew people. A lot. That's of what I'm. That's people, what I'm in it for. Of, like you know, what I'm saying, and so I I do understand if you're just looking at numbers, you're like, all right, this is a room of ten people, and we got hundreds of people that we employ. And I do get not like not understanding. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I do. I do kind of. It's an ownership get mentality. That. It's like, <laughs> why are they bad? Yeah, <laughs> they don't yeah. understand nothing. They're just like, what? Why aren't you a billionaire? But Ronnie, you're in a, a, a independent film, right? Yes, we department. Can, we can talk man, about we can talk about it, man. Can, independent zero yeah, studios. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's a grand hustle film, man. Tip. Mm-hmm. Tip, you know, he started his comedy journey probably like two years ago now. But I remember during the pandemic or when he was going through his situation with all the allegations, which were false. And he just laid low, man, and wrote. He was like, I'm writing this thing, man. I Originally, he told me the part was from Bruce Bruce. And he said, okay. Tiny told him to call me. So shout out to Tiny for always looking out for me. Tiny always yeah. tells him about me, like for years. She's like, you going to do my favorite joke? I remember, you know, they were in the old uptown, but. He had a role for me. He sent me this, uh, this, this, this script, and I read it so fast. I was out, you know. Remember, those are my uh, when I was on the back porch during the pandemic days. Mm-hmm, when I was on the back mm-hmm. porch going live, and I sit out there smoking and uh, yeah. read this script, laughing my ass off, and uh, you know, just like, oh, he gonna do it. You know, it's it's different seeing somebody going from the script, script, script to yeah, we shoot on this day. I'm like, oh, oh, oh it's real. It's we, real. We're doing it. It's and, real. I caught COVID the day of the table read. Oh, no. Day before shooting principal shots. They called Tyler 24 hours. They said he was off script the next day. Like, Tyler 
took got my part and killed it. I was like, I probably wouldn't done that good anyway. But I, okay, you know, but I, I was just happy I was alive for COVID. Tip was mm-hmm. like, man, just get better, big dog, and we got you. So he gave me a pretty good part in there. He, it's a Fire. really, it's a really good part. He gave me a character, and uh, you know, you'll see. You got to check out. It's a uh, departments four hundred four dot com. Check it out. Okay, it's independent. Nine ninety nine to buy. Four ninety nine to rent. We uh, sell the nickels and dimes. That's the king so, not bad prices. Not bad prices for yeah. it. And it's like, it's not, it's it's very high quality. It's, okay. It's one of those, you know, remember how when you saw Friday, you might have been in the ninth grade or tenth grade. It's just, it's going to be one of them good sleepover uh, roast movies. Second movie. grade. Se- <laughs> you saw it in second grade? No, I did not see it in second grade. I'm saying that Everyone you, you saw else it. in second grade saw it. The you teachers would use it as an example. I was the one kid. I was lying. Uh, I was. I didn't was see like it, but I it. act like I saw it. I was like, you man, got knocked the hell out. You got knocked crazy, the fuck out. <laughs> like, yeah, you got knocked on yeah. out, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine you try to do the lie and didn't know it. You got knocked on out. <laughs> and then that one part, he was in a chicken coop or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was. <laughs> My mom used to do that, like popular movies. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna age, my, I'm gonna age myself. I'm with it. She goes and she used to go and see the R rated hip hop movie before me. Okay. And come tell me if I can see it or not. She went and saw House Party. She said, No, you can't see House Party. I think I was probably eight or nine when that came Dang. out. It's, it not, sucks, for, it's not for a nine year old. House Party is, is My kids see House Party now. It's kinda tame, but it's kinda not. It's tame now. It's like a rate it's like it's not as bad as the rated R white comedies of the eighties. At all. But it's also like it doesn't have any of the date got rape some innuendo. stuff in it that it's not for kids. You ever notice sure. all the white comics got a little date rape in there, just a little bit of roofie, they, a little every, bit. They always knock a chick out. You know? uh, it was never cool to us. We like, why would you do that? You got a girl. What, Sweet you. sixteen, the Anthony Every Michael one of them, Hall they and the drug, Rose. They drug them girls. Uh, Revenge of the Nerds. Every dude single wearing one of them. Darth smashed, Vader dark, costume. That, yeah. that was a rape. And then <laughs> that was a rape. <laughs> that that resulted in a relationship. And then in the future sequels, they're together. They're together. Yeah. They got kids, but you got raped at first. <laughs> you got raped into this relationship. Right. Right. It was. A, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man. man, I think uh, Friday and stuff. I think it's gonna be, it's just gonna be. It's ours. You know what I'm saying? Like Fight. if you from Atlanta, you never live in some apartments. No age, no apartments. It's so uh, every many character. Atlanta comedians in Bruh. this movie. When I saw the trailer, a little thug tear. Like, bro, it, it was. It's, every time I see it, I, I'm like, we like. Man. I used to see Ernesto all the time and be like, man, Ernesto, if I had the ability to put him in something, he's I would. one of the funniest comedians in the country, bro. Yeah, Ernesto is who you call when you open a comedy night, mm-hmm. and you it is rowdy, and they got TVs and. You don't know what the tone of it will right, be. Our right. Our usually your first headliner. Every, mm-hmm. every, every comedy night mm-hmm. I've ever seen open up in like a questionable spot in Atlanta. Nesto, if y'all don't know who our Nesto is, he has his hat bent the up. First headliner. On the old comedy, Dirty he would had his be hair the first bent. Feature. Dirty be the first feature. Nesto, <laughs> Tyler Craig. I'd be like, Rest yo, how piece, are Tyler they Craig. finding out about these rooms before <laughs> they start? Yeah, they was calling before them. Before they start. <laughs> they was, I, would find, I would see a flyer be like starting – all right, that's Thursday. I'd go, and it would always be Ernesto, Ernesto. and Dirty. Yeah. Ernesto had a room on Keller Road that was ratchet, but it was just they would listen. Mm. And it might be somebody drunk on the ground, and but you okay. had I had to go to those spots to see. You get to see what's funny for real when everybody don't care, right? <laughs> or if they right. they really do care, it just right. look like they don't. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Atlanta kind of. That's why we're funny because we have to do all the rooms. Then you go to the, uh, I, what's the white rooms and stuff? The uh, Star Bar, stuff Star like Bar. that. Shout out to Rodney. Shout out uh, to Rodney. You know, Uptown Comic Con, every, every iteration of Uptown, the, the mm-hmm. Peachtree Street was mm-hmm. the, the original. That was the one that was the hardest to do uh, because you would get in there and the whole BMF is in there. You know the series? Yeah, they are in there. Like all the BMF people with the money, they got okay. money. They in there. Uh, Michael Vick might be in there. Mm. Ti over there in the VIP. You got Chris Tucker might walk in and do a guest spot. Man, like it was a lot of pressure. And, uh, you know, it was the the night, the Sunday night was the showcase of everything. Like the whole city would come on. Nar host the rest in peace. He's in the apartments too, man. Right? They got a good. Movie <laughs> thing at the end. Uh, yeah, Nard was the one who kind of brought the the trap stripper comedy culture together all together. I think mm-hmm. Bruce might have been the original of doing that, but like the dope boys find the comedians. Yeah, 
and the strippers and the it's like the underworld meets up at uptown. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of strip clubs would close on Sundays. Yes, and so then you know, like the strippers would come to uptown. They would be in there, still open, and then we start doing the after party after Sunday night. <laughs> Everybody go to Magic right after. So you know, you get exposed to some of this stuff early. You get to have rich, rich nigga fun as mm. a broke comedian when you first start in Atlanta. It's, it, it'll spoil you. That is wild. That is wild when such you get stranger the, they treat you hands just you like money. It. And it's like, go have a good time. Yeah, it's I keep like, most yo, of that. I'm going to go in the, the I'm throwing, bathroom. I'm throwing $19. Whatever I paid to park is now, you know, going in one pocket. Yeah. I'm throwing $19. <laughs> and well, I'm going to get that. Right. I, I have right. mastered how to leave so stealth. Which That's, is, I mean, you know. It's my favorite. Just dipping. It, <laughs> they might be paying us to dip. Yeah, we they might be paying us to dip. It might yeah. be like, hey, these guys out here joking in VIP right. for the but love they used of the to game. Like us more than the you know regular what I'm customers, saying? Like, they, hey, the strippers like yeah, the comedians more. They just, do, <laughs> right? Because, like, you know, we we not coming with the with the ill intentions. Sometimes yeah, we, we might just, be roasted them. We like, can really, we really know how to kick it. We know how everybody to kick don't it. know how to kick it. Shout and out us to, kicking it. Comfortably, sometimes it's a threat to I, some I people. I learned they, we you know. knew how to kick it when I went out of town, when I went on that Kings of Comedy search thing, and I went to a strip club in another city. I went to Philly, and they was touching them. I was like, y'all can touch them? They like, you don't be touching them? <laughs> <laughs> so then I brought all them to Magic, and they were like, we can't touch them? I'm like, no, you cannot touch yeah. the property in here, sir. <laughs> you cannot. You know, because we got to. We still like gentlemen at the end of the day. Right, it's like all right. the killers are still gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like everybody's southern gentlemen. They will shoot you, but you you have to make them shoot you. We have a more social environment. Yeah, it's very social. You know? It's like it's like yeah. chill out, Eat bro. Some wings, chill out, listen. What to are we music. doing right now? This is yeah. our downtime. The guns yeah. are in the car. Mm-hmm. Every, it's so much security here. You're safe. It's a safe space. It's a sa- well, safe space. It's I don't a- know if everyone will agree. But strip clubs are a safe space sometimes. For, yeah, yeah. For the uh, if you if you're in the right mental place, yeah, I feel like yeah. it's not you know like everybody's not there to you know. Let me tell you what I remember my everybody. birthday uh, eating lemon pepper wings, standing at the at Magic, and this girl is dancing right there, and Future's playing. I was like, oh, this is the only way you're supposed to hear Future. You're supposed to yeah. It's yeah, not, and like <laughs> like yeah. a fedora appeared on my head. At the, it's, like, it's designed like like you catch different things yeah. at different times. You know, you're not supposed to just like sit and listen to it like yeah. it's like it's nice. No, you're supposed to be out in the elements, and yeah. then it's like oh something hits you, and it's like man that that was. And that you got to test your sauce. Like you got to see can mm. you hold a conversation with this gorgeous person. And, and see if you fold up. Some dudes don't know how to do what to say to a girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And now nobody has to speak anymore. You just DM <laughs> and send emojis. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I remember going doing UGA, and uh, I think I, I think you, I got you on the show. Did you you do a show? From, you came. Open? Yeah, I opened for you. I opened then for we you. did the, the yeah. classic. Then we did the step show, the big step show. Mm-hmm. Brought mm-hmm. you out, and I I thought I was killer. I had just got the Concord George. They dropped with us at 2010 when they first came back out mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. I came out. I was, I was ripping. This girl was like, "Why is Joyce doing it?" I was like, "I'm fat, bitch. Why you?" <laughs> I thought I killed it. I was putting so much pressure on them elevens. Hey. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, the step show that's like another level. It's yeah, yeah, it's big, it's big. Mm-hmm. But the funny part about like a step show at a uh, PWI is still like a step show at a PWI. Like these, the dudes in the fraternity that play football, they really play football, so they don't yeah. got time to really practice. <laughs> like, yeah. like at the HBCUs, they still do a good show, but it's a little more condensed because like mm-hmm. they win in championships, and stuff. right? Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not like fam you at all. It, it's and you know other schools. Not no no diss to the PWIs because some lines go crazy. Like I've seen some IOTAs te- come and take the title at a lot of step shows. <laughs> I'm like, where did you? I found out about IOTAs at the step show. I was like, oh, yeah. who's the brown dudes? Hey, get them. Shout to the IOTAs. Them, they will beat your ass, bro. Get they them got letters machetes. right when you reading the. Uh... Oh, at a step show, you read the <laughs> shit wrong. Oh yeah. God. Oh my God. <laughs> we that's a whole other show. Like reading the <laughs> Greeks shit wrong. Right. Right. That's a hard yeah. recovery. Or saying yeah. the wrong school name. Mm-hmm. I did that twice. Mm-hmm. I, 
And then I said the rival school at one school. I did oh, a man. show at Southern. I was at Southern Homecoming years ago. I think Plastic Cup Boys was on the show. Uh, like Spank was on the show. Benji Brown. I had a headline because I think Benji had came down there already. Okay. So I'm killing. I'm like, of course I smoked a joint before. I'm ripping. I was like, grabbing y'all crazy. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> the I ooh is like, not good. <laughs> I said, my bad. Ooh. I'm high. <laughs> Hey, y'all don't smoke. And then I got out of it. And then I did it again. Oh, you know no. why I did it? Because RJ Shots are RJ, RJ E. Roosevelt Johnson, one of the top college agents in the game. Okay. Uh, RJ comes up to me right before I go on stage. Now, don't call him Bramlin now. The, see, that's people got to understand. They have to stop set, telling you, like, like, reminding you of things you don't need. Especially when you're like hosting, when you're like, or like, right before you go up, right before you go up, don't I only to need me. to hear how you want it said. I don't need to hear alternatives that you don't want. And they gave it to you backstage already. Mm-hmm. Don't like I need like all comedians take take a moment to yourself before you go up on stage, man. Kind of visualize yourself mm. doing your first couple jokes and kind of mm. go. Like I, I kind of take a moment and just walk away and just kind of. Like get in my, you got to get in your zone, bro. You got to right. see yourself ripping it down, and just gather your thoughts. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like get, take it, it. It could be thirty seconds, bro. Just walk away and just mm-hmm. breathe and, and do your job. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, some people invade. Some people don't understand like personal space. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of comedians walk off, got headphones and stuff. I understand now. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. When he came up to me and said that shit right before I came up, I was like, damn, RJ. That's the first thing I thought in my mind. It's in in my head the whole time. It's like, don't say Grambling. Don't say Grambling. I said that, and I said, I was saying that, and my mouth was like, ah, Grambling. Y'all are the best. I was like, oh, shit, I did it again. (laughs) It's probably somewhere, somebody in front of you with a southern sweatshirt on. And you, Man, you they see did. It, it was you dark see in there. That's what got the me. S. You see it, but you still I got out turned of it into I, a G. I'm glad I got out of that. Shout Two out ovals. Me. Shout out to Rivals. Um, Ronnie, do you meditate? Uh, yes. I don't. I don't know if I do it correctly, but I okay. do take moments and kind of be uh, uh, show gratitude. It's, it's like a prayer mm-hmm. kind of prayer kind of thing but you don't meditate you be like wake up in the morning and just take it's silence for like an hour or some shit like that i don't know you were talking about a moment to yourself and then it got me thinking i wonder if ronnie like you know um i kind of get it i, I don't know no if it's meditation answer. or high like i get like okay. it's, it's a whole herbal it's like a whole ritual to me it's mm-hmm, like i got mm-hmm. my blood i got my water mm-hmm. i'm smoking i'm thinking about a set and i'm kind of you know you kind of go deeper in your head yeah, yeah so i guess that is like meditation shout out to the, the cannabis prayers you know what i'm saying do you have, so do you ever smoke in silence are you or is there always something playing always something going on or is it ever like yo i'm just Chilling, smoking. It's uh, sometimes it's music. Sometimes it's Nothing. like R and B. It's like sometimes okay. it's R and B or something old. Like I remember, I used to when I uh, had boss up when I was in L A. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would have to. Uh, I was in L A. part of that same time. Show yeah, was man. Yeah. It, it, it'd be so good to see your your people out there mm-hmm. doing like mm-hmm. booked. Being L A. is one thing, but being L A. booked and, and housed, yeah, it's another feeling. They pay for your apartment and all that stuff like that. But uh, I remember just. In my apartment, they had like a chocolate wall. The wall-wall. apartments. Y'all were in the apartments. We was in apartments. Everybody possibly. moved to it. Not LA. the apartments. We was in the apartments. Y'all were in the apartments. Yeah, we went in departments. <laughs> apartments full, full dot com, man. <laughs> T.I. is the direct, it's directorial debut. It was mm-hmm. second produced by D.C. Young Fly and Carlos Miller and Duval. Okay, Duval. okay. So, EP, EP credit, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Yeah, man, so that's a- That might be the funniest lineup of producers. Come on, man. Lineup movie producers in a line, you're not going to get funnier than- Not funny, the the T.I. Duval, Duval, DC. DC. Yeah, Yeah. those Zoom meetings must be hilarious. They got to be hilarious. I wasn't in the the, the executive producer Zoom meetings, but I was in all the other Zoom meetings and Mm -hmm. like the- the revive and shout out to Champ. Champ, uh my boy Champ wrote it. Him and T I wrote it and uh Tyler, Tyler pushed up and then we all kinda everybody it was a, it was a script and then the comedians did what comedians do on right, certain scenes right. to get the get the point by design. Across. By so, design. They they yeah, brought you guys in to, to yeah, do what man. you do Damn, and the showcase K-Dub you guys killed to it. the fullest. Yeah, man. Hey. Uh, Money Bag Mafia it was throwing off one, killed mm-hmm. it, bro. He was so funny and everybody was so funny. Tokyo VVS, the girls is funny as hell, bro. Like, 
it was just like I, it's gonna be a lot of TikToks that come out of this movie. That's all okay. I'm gonna say. A lot okay. of TikToks, a lot of quotables, a lot of roasts. They're gonna be stealing a lot of these roasts. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that was the goal. There's yeah. a whole untold lineage a, of is, people stealing roasts from movies, from movies uh-huh. and things. When I finally saw Damon Wayans' comedy special. I was like, oh, yes, yes. It, this is pre-internet. You guys yes. were always stealing. Yes. You guys always just had access to older jokes to bring to school. It's a lot of people when the social media first started, it was a lot of people doing a lot of old comedy view premises and bits and mm. skits. And, uh, yeah, like, uh, one of them dudes got caught doing all Tracy, uh, Patrice O'Neill shit on you, on world. Style. Right. Right. I uh, ended up getting one of his gigs. He missed. Cause he <laughs> like, he, yeah, he it was like hot he, damn. He was, I rock or some shit. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. uh, he was supposed to do some schools and then they like, they needed somebody. And then I came through and I he told him my price. And then they, they did the deal that day. And that's when I realized, they, Oh, I should have asked you were way too way low. Way you were way too low. He was getting you stupid. Were way, I always find out. They I were charged, like, Oh yes. Yeah. We, we just said the contract. I'm like, what? I always find out. <laughs> I charge too low when I find out who came before me and didn't do good. And they were so popular. On the, like the, the early internet dudes, was taking all the gigs and just trying, and gigs trying to do good. like I, And I, just winging it. They weren't even thinking about coming back. Man, I was. They on, weren't thinking, they about, thinking about coming back. And yeah. I, I hosted, I remember University of Tennessee, I did a step show a long time ago. And it was, you know, some of the step shows is like three hours. You know, they had mm-hmm. like a, a mm-hmm. break. They had the fashion club, right. do a fashion show in the middle of this shit. Mm-hmm. Like they had an after party and I was I was just telling jokes the whole time and just being funny the whole time. And they were like, man, you were way better host last year. And, and I was like, who's the host? I was like, don't tell me. They, they start hitting me on Twitter who it was. I was like, oh, buddy, cool as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but I found out he was charging crazy. And I was hey. like, damn, I undercharged y'all. <laughs> That's the thing. When you host and they expect you to have something every time you yeah. go out there. This is, but I was so following this dude. Like, on, I did a tour of uh, the schools that some of these comedians left in shambles. Like, I was That's the, the makeup comedian for so many schools. <laughs> Cause they'll come back. Cause after the show, they'd be like, "Man, we're so glad you were funny." The last dude, he did fifteen minutes, and then did the same fifteen minutes again. What? And yeah, I was like, <laughs> "I'm gonna tell you off air who it is." I don't want to, you know, disparage anybody in the comedy journey. It was early in the journey, so okay. It's not nobody that's. It's not yeah. nobody who rocking right now. So All right. All they right. was rock. They was rocking at the time. They were rocking. They was at fire the time. hot. So yeah, I think I think the social media comics got more savvy. And yeah, they decide, did. Well, the and, thing is, they, they're playing the longer play now. They played the Shout out to Desi Banks. I go on the road with him all the time, but he basically reached out like, "Yo, I've been watching you for years. You know, say you're an OG, and I just want to learn. And um, you, know, I have this going. If you want to come, cool. If you don't, but I just need help. So I was just taking the shit he had and, and trimming the fat and like punching up some. But he was. He was funny already. I'm like, bro, yeah. you got a you got a, a portfolio full of funny shit we could pull from. That's why I tell every comedian that tries to transition from the 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 online to on stage, don't try to do what we're doing. Go back to your skit, your your highest view skit, and put that shit in word form. That's your joke. You already did all your right, jokes, right? That's your mixtape. You did your mixtape. Right. Now it's time for the album because now on stage you get to see what to keep, what to throw away, what you need mm-hmm. to make more visual, and we got all this data. That you on your page, you right? Know what I'm saying like I talk, and that's just what that? you had access to this visually. Brain, the beauty man. of like, stand up is, is you could take brain. it anywhere, and you could take it yeah. further, and you could do things that you can't do with you know you don't have the special effects, you don't have the locations, you could be anywhere, you could do anything, you know. And I try to uplift the young guys because. They were so shitty to us when we first started, bro. It was just <laughs> yeah. the hazing, the, the, the hood, the hazing the comedians used to do to us. You really couldn't even talk, like, outside, like, on stage. You know how people be mm-hmm. off to the side talking? You couldn't even really inter- – you couldn't talk in the circles of older comedians until they knew you was funny for real. Like, they was it's – yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a fraternity for real, but I just – in my mind, I try to be what I needed some older comedians to be for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got you. That's my and, and like I'm learning more shit to tell young niggas. I'm like I didn't know I should have had a spec script. I would have mm-hmm. even if you got to do scripts for dummies or get somebody else to write it and you just say it to them. We got to get them spec scripts, bro. Because yeah, it's too many funny motherfuckers that don't get a shot at nothing because they ain't got nothing to show to people. 
Because right. you can say you're funny all day. Everybody can vouch for you. But if they ain't got no proof, mm-hmm. they can't fuck with you. They want to. Right. You, they you got to show you took the bomb apart once. Something. You'll get help any time. Once you get in the door, you'll get help. And cause, but I mean, you gotta you gotta show you could do it once. Yeah, man. Because I don't type well, so when I had to okay. do my spec script for Miss Pat, I hit up shout out to Plug Man and uh, Nima. They helped me out with the. Uh, but I, we had a concept. I, I I wanted to do these scenes like this, and then they would add some sauce, and then you know what I'm saying. Like right. we got it all done. And I was like, yo, these people helped me out. I told who helped me. You I, know what I'm saying. I told who because Miss Pat is, is one of us. You know what I'm saying. Right. So she told she because but the thing was she hired me to do warm ups because you can't just hire a writer that they don't really know like that you know mm-hmm. I think you worked on the pilot and stuff like that I think yeah yeah but she hired me to do warm ups she was like Ronnie just do warm ups and they gonna see you and I was mm-hmm. like I already understand what she's saying to me me and her I'm like man mm-hmm. I got you you just man I used to tear that goddamn warm up man that shit was like three hours but I had them yeah swag surfing and all kind right. of shit I brought right. my own DJ shout out to DJ Black Boy that's my dog and then he kind of not the black boy. Black boy is hey. is very integral to Atlanta comedy. He he uh kind of helped Boat Williams get out there and do his uh tour. Okay, yeah, yeah. He was kind of managing. I, I got black helping me, man. I got I got a team of people, man. Hey, I'm, man. I'm doing it right this time, Rob Hayes. I'm it's gathering some goddamn city, man. I'm gathering all the expendables, and okay. we all we shooting shit up. I'm bringing all the motherfuckers, hey, the, man. That's the ones what's that everybody up. forgot about, and the ones that's still funny and want to work. I'm, I'm I'm like, come on, man. Like I'm. I'm I'm trying to goddamn build a network, but we doing it already. It's like mm-hmm. 85 used to have me on all but uh, so much in the beginning that yeah. you know motherfuckers walking to me. They they didn't know Comic View no more. They just like he like we didn't buy Jordans. Like Carlos made a song. Yeah. They made up and I came in one day. That nigga DC titties in the building. Nigga. Yeah. I get stopped at airport. What's up, titties in the building? This motherfucker. Oh yeah, wait. So, Wait, that that was wait, wait, wait. He didn't make it up then for okay. me, but he did it. I was like, yo, no, what? he did it when I came here one day, and that <laughs> shit was so fucking funny. It was like I just walked in. He said, "Did it?" I said, "Oh man!" Nigga. But like eighty five, very early on, was mm-hmm. like had us on. Like I think we was on before Chica, me and you and uh, Rodney Perry. I got a picture of yeah, all of us at Steve yeah. Harvey Studio dabbing. That might have been to like, let you know exactly what time it dabbing. was. Dabbing. We were taking twenty fourteen. We're all dabbing. Yeah, everybody's dabbing. Yeah. I think I had an Apollo shirt, but mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. seeing Carlos go through the progressions of figuring out how to. He was producing. He was he was yeah figuring what worked and mm-hmm. you know when, when he got the formula boy 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 it was boy. it was dangerous right because right. them three i was like oh that's them supposed to be that's <laughs> it's supposed to be like that it's, man those episodes were like events i was yeah. like on the train in new york and like homesick and i would listen and i would just be like man like they are having so much fun this is the funniest yeah bro you know and it's just like no matter who so they do in the bro. mix and so it was organic. so organic and they were making up songs and they were like some episodes were so funny i would like be like i gotta go to youtube and watch yeah yeah i gotta see how you know what like what it looked like yeah it was it was crazy yeah i'm so proud of the motherfucker mm-hmm. bro it's, it's like it's <laughs> All my partners is like, damn, because I remember Carlos when he had that 5.0. Oh, that you know what I'm saying? We, he had the Cadillac. I see everybody progressing cars. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, and, but, yeah. And it was like, I remember my first time seeing Carlos, uh, Skull Bubba, rest in peace, rest in peace to OG. Mm-hmm. He was like, man, I got this young dude down here. Uh, he killing shit. You got to come check him out. And I'm like, all right. And he was, Carlos was hosting that room on the South Side. What's the room? Throwbacks. Throwbacks, man. When I yeah. tell you, this is a pool hall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But he had them people sit down watching that show. Like everybody stopped when it was his. When he, Carlos would go up at throwbacks, kill, bro. and do whatever he wanted to do. If yes. he wanted to be an Italian man, the whole he time, would do it the whole time, the whole time. If he wanted to, like you know, a comedian bomb, he did a whole eulogy. Yes, like, yes. It was like yo, it's a famous roast that Corey because oh Corey Oakley used God. to pull up at all the rooms. That was my yeah. favorite era because yeah. Corey Holcomb was already Corey Holcomb mm-hmm. and I had been on the road with him a couple of times but every time he would headline and when he comes to Atlanta he would do all the rooms like yeah. with Big Sean before that Carlos room Big Sean used to have Frozen Palace okay. on the south side that started at mm-hmm. uh, it was like uh, Thursday night and it, was, it wouldn't start to about 11 so whatever the headliner was doing in Uptown they will just come on down to yeah. the south side and 
I've been I've been threatening uh, that somebody's gonna kill me a couple times. This is how bad I was roasting somebody. Like, I'm gonna kill hey. your fat ass. I was like, well, if you gonna kill me, let me keep roasting you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's how I knew. Like that's that, those rules taught you to be fearless because it's like yeah. these these is real killers in here. Then they come a bit boy got down. You you tore my ass up. But I'm like, whoo, you ain't gonna kill me. I, I get on the mic. You gonna kill me tonight? What's your name? Let's tell everybody your name. Who gonna murder me tonight? <laughs> <laughs> And then they had 18 daiquiri machines going at the same time. Like, Jeez. you would be in there. Uh, that's why it's the frozen palace. The frozen palace. The it was like a wall of daiquiri machines. Gotcha. And that shit would just be going off. But then it would be packed. Like, we talking about, like, packed wall to wall. On, mm-hmm. Especially, like, uh, when something was in town. Yeah. And everybody was looking for, like, an after spot. So that comedy night just kind of shaped me like Jay Paul. Like, a lot of those Jay Paul's. The dirty rooms was the yeah. ones. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But it, the throwbacks was on Thursdays. On oh, Gabby Road was uh, backstage. Backstage. Bruce backstage Bruce still going. Y'all can still go over yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Really? They, they crook it back up. Wow. I think, uh, I don't know who hosted. I think uh, Anthony Turner was over there. I saw it the other day. I think okay. Tyler said he did it recently, not too long ago. Probably. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, throwback still. I mean, backstage pop back out. You know, they Wednesday out. nights, what I would do is I would start at the punchline, and then I would just keep going further and further south. So I started the punchline, and I go to the skull, and I go to two five five, then I go to backstage, and so right. I'd hit four spots on a Wednesday. Right, and I would like as I go further south, I go less people were the same. And yep, then, yep, you know, like yep. like by the time I ended up at, you know, on Gabby Road, it was a totally different comedy scene than yes. where I started with on Roswell Road. Because she didn't work over here, and then it might work here. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it don't work here. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Or she just working here, ain't working. It's like, then you find out mm-hmm. the shit that work at all of them. You're like, oh, shit, this yeah, works everywhere. Yeah. So that's, that's the you did what that's I, a You banger. did what I wish I had done. Like, I, I wish I had done more diverse rooms more. Because, like, mm-hmm. the punchline of those comments. But that's what you with, told me to do. I did. That's being a Roy good Jr. Told mentor. Me to like, like when, when, when I met you, you was like, stay in the skull. Stay in the punchline. Yep. You know? Yep. But I wanted to be nice like you. <laughs> so I also went to the to you know the uptown. I also went backstage throwbacks. You know wherever the yeah. candy shop, where, wherever make me laugh Mondays. You know like I was all over the place. But that's because I was like I want to be funny like Ronnie. I want to be funny like K Dub. But I want to. I want you know I don't want any type of ceiling or anything yeah. suppressing me. Yeah, because sometimes we in, in our room, sometimes you get so in, engulfed in trying to rip mm-hmm. that you're not developing out the material or a bit that could be something huge or special. Right. It's like you're trying to get hit singles. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're not worried about a building an album or building. Some people do. Like I've done it. I I do it in the space that I that I have to do it. But it was mm-hmm. like I saw at the Skull and all those other places. They just let you get the shit off. Like, right. They got their mouth ready at Uptown ready to boo mm-hmm, like so mm-hmm. you gotta come with that shit right now but then there's people on the other fold that don't know what it feels like to rip right they don't know what it feels like yeah. to have people like say things outside of laughter just oh my god like they don't Nizzle. have yeah <laughs> they stupid as hell like yeah, they don't they don't you, know you really that. be an uptown trying to like, make that back row of comedians laugh that's yeah. what that was the goal the crowd is cool, but mm-hmm. that back row of judgmental ass, mean ass comedians be dying laughing. You see them running on the wall and hitting shit and run like they'll right. run up the ramp on the other at the Marietta Street. They'll run up the ramp a little bit if you ripping real hard. So you know, I, I kind of we we are editing my special right now. It's a clean special, but there are points where people in the audience are like, "Oh shit!" Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> so you, did, you decided to go clean. That's smart. I mean, I that's my own ankle weights I put. I don't even know if I I don't even live like the the lifestyle of uh, you know. I never. I, my Facebook name was never Clean Comedian Rob Hayes. But no, at the because same time, the thing about clean is it you can monetize. Right. <laughs> you know, we're, right. We found out the hard way. Like yeah. that. You Disney bought YouTube. Right. Or some something happened. They were like, hey. All that, all that cussing and all the smoking and stuff. We well, if you want ads, if you want ads, then yeah, there's certain yeah, there's certain parameters, smart. and then I always put those on myself. But you know, the thing is, the audience doesn't care. They don't the care as long as they get the ice cream. They don't care. They don't care how right. you make the food. They just want the food. Right. They just want it. And also, some of them come 
for the profanity they feel like they can yeah, get cussing is fun, bro. everywhere cussing. else. The funnest thing is when I do a corporate gig and then I, I say stuff to Tonto because I know they don't know me. I'm not like, yo, they say I got to be clean, but I'm going to just do what I do up here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and then, like, after the out, they realize, like, you know, oh, man, that, yeah. What's so there's a time and place for everything, I think. I think, uh, like, I did a school, um, it was probably, it was in Huntsville or some shit. A long mm-hmm. time ago, uh, I was with Naeem from the Plastic Cup Boys. Yeah. And uh, my agent, my manager had booked the show. And I know, you know, he had a, he was just trying his best to get, they wanted Naeem really bad. And I mm-hmm. had, I was on the show and they had booked me back to come, come. But I was telling Naeem, I said, yo, these kids are freshmen and they want a clean show. And I, I, I was like, I'm going to do clean because they really ain't been nowhere. Like it's okay. They're children. Out here, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it, this is not like, these is like Bible study children. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of them be turned up, but a lot of these, they finna go to Bible study on campus. You know what I'm saying? Like they yeah. still they're still on the path to righteousness right here. right so i think now you came out did a joke about uh they you know they uh you know, they got this new thing where they people taking shots of tequila in their ass and they were like <laughs> <laughs> some schools that might have went no it was some I, but I told schools him behind, that might have been I said, like I, said, a, you know? I was like dog i've been here before they kind of he was like man niggas know what i do i was like all right and then i think i had jay dukes go up before me jay dukes ripped that bitch you know okay. jay dukes one cousin Mm-hmm. JD was destroyed that bitch, and I had came right behind her with the tsunami. I think I might have did the honey bun joke and some okay. shit. Yeah, because you know I was just I don't know the other gear. I just go, you know. Naeem is right. one of the funniest motherfuckers you ever see, but it's like certain circumstances you like it don't call for that. It's like doing the Def Jam show at an Amish school. You know what I'm saying? Like right. <laughs> I mean, but you know, like like the thing is, it, I like that he still stayed himself. Right. I was like, oh, that's you got to stick to your guns. You know, yeah. you got to you got to do what you do. Yeah. Yeah. It's like cussing around like older ladies. I don't. Mm-hmm. It's not cool mm-hmm. to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. Well, even when you catch yourself cussing, you see somebody older, you're like, whoops, oh, sorry. <laughs> they don't. No, the kids now don't even have that filter when they see an adult. They're like, "Man, what's up, bro? What's up? Fuck going on?" He's like, yeah. Hey, man, I'm grown. <laughs> I know what's up, big boy. Like, hold on, fam. <laughs> That's how my son talked to me. What's up, big boy? My, <laughs> my cereal. <laughs> my cereal is hilarious. <laughs> Ronnie, do you uh, do you believe in any other universes? Uh, I don't know, man. I think I think it's. I don't know, man. I don't even know what's out there. I think it's a lot of stuff that we don't know, and mm-hmm. we kind of act like we got it all figured out. Yeah, and it could be a whole other Ronnie somewhere. It's a metaverse Ronnie. Yeah, that's uh, he's six seven and dunking on somebody. Who knows? Like I, I, I don't know. I just know God is good, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just know sometimes the uh, when I when I pray for stuff or manifest stuff because I grew up at World Changes. I grew up Creflo's Church. Okay. From age, I think my mom. That's why we moved to College Park because my mom was following. She started going to this church that was in the cafeteria, mm. and it turned out to be World Changes. And they got the big, the regular church. We was over there when it had the regular size chapels in the dome, and it's just. I know God is 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 uh, working out stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, I know God got a mm-hmm. plan for stuff. I know God. You know what I'm saying? It's real. Yeah, because you know I've been in some situations. You like, who I wasn't supposed to live in that car accident. You see a car or something you was well, in. You like, woo, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's, that whole bless the blessed day ever is like how I live. I feel like if you mm. wake up, you breathe and you blessed as fuck. Like you blessed, but you know now I tell my kids it's blessed and fearless, blessed and fortunate. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Whatever you okay. need it to be, it's blessed and, <laughs> and funny, blessed and fruitful. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's whatever you need it to be. I just know you. It's some. It's something else, like guiding us through this whole journey. And I think I don't think it's his job to intervene on everything. But I think the you know righteous people you know come out on top at the end. I know this might be cheesy, but okay. you know I just feel like if you're good to people, stuff good good stuff happen to you. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm, if you if mm-hmm. you wish good on folks, and you know what I'm saying, you come with you know never with malicious intent. You know what I'm saying? I think you're rewarded in a sense, you know what I'm saying, with grace and blessings and favor. I just got pulled Thanks. over and he I ain't go to jail, so Hey. Bless the hell. <laughs> uh Ronnie, what's your favorite color sky? Like sky? Yeah. Like uh like a bluish like sunset kinda orange, bluish okay. kinda, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that that uh that that Miami, you know what I'm saying, on yeah. the water type of that's or Jamaica or something like that. Like when you 
when you out of the country and you and that, that thing about to go, the sun going down, and mm-hmm. that's that's a beautiful. You just sit out there and look at it like, dang, God, God doing his thing, or it. <laughs> I just saw a really good one in Milwaukee. I, I mean, not Milwaukee. I was in Madison. I was staying on the water, and I woke up. The sun was setting. And I was like, man, this is like it's dope, right? Fire, yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah. somebody, somebody thought of this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is intentional. Yeah, okay. and like all the like blues and orange, you know, and, and where they met and everything. Yeah, I want to see the northern lights in Alaska, man. I want to see that, yeah. in person one time. But I just don't want to be. Have you cold. been to all the states? Have you done comedy in all the states? I did, yeah, I did Alaska. I've done every state except. Wyoming, I think I passed. Okay, through, I passed through there, connected or some shit. I don't. No, I didn't. Mm. I never been to Wyoming. No, did I pass through? You there? did the know. Dakotas. I did North and South Dakota. Ooh. I did a couple schools there. Me and my boy Vince, we drove up there. We drove yeah. to South Dakota from Georgia. Man, in my van, we got oh, yeah. pulled over. Yeah. We got you used pulled to drive over. a lot. Just drive a lot, man. Yeah. Because it was so many schools back to back. That's how I could make some money. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you would have to go there. Like I had, I remember I mapped out my first. Uh, to a route when I first did NACA and got a bunch of dates. I did, I think I did NACA uh, Mid Atlantic and then I did NACA North. And uh, I got 30 dates in one of them. I got like 40 dates in the other one. Mm-hmm. And then my agent filled in the rest because I was like, just book it all. I, we just go. And he booked me like 105 schools in 112 days. So it was like, man, we was calculating before I left. 105 schools in 112 days. I was going from January to May straight and uh i think i had one layover in georgia because i had to go from a school in boston to a school in florida and i stopped and went to lunch with my wife and then went back to the airport yeah and kept it pushing but i, I told him when i after i finished that i said don't ever i don't ever book me for that like that no more. <laughs> i don't want to do that no more yeah because i was doing two schools a day sometimes three schools a day two um, schools a day yeah yeah i would do two in boston like, that sounds crazy because yeah. you gotta deal with Getting the direction from an eighteen-year-old, they only know building names. They don't know any street oh, names. Yeah. It's frustrating. You got to park in a specific spot. You got to deal with that twice yeah, in a day. Twice, twice. After probably driving an hour between shows or something like that, because you'll get there and do like a news show, and the news shows okay. are the worst right. sometimes. Yeah, they, the sometimes they okay. Is, the noon is pretty whack. Noon is like at lunch. You mm-hmm. got to be in a cafeteria mm-hmm. in, in, a, in a student center of a community college, which is. That's fine, but, you know, it's like they're eating. And then yeah. they stop and sit and watch you if they want to, or they just keep it pushing. Or sometimes they'll come. To, a lot of those schools don't have a lot of entertainment. They come to the show to sit down, but it's like it's like a, it's like a bell or everybody. It's like a certain time that everybody just gets up and leaves anyway. Yeah. So it's like you rip it and the motherfuckers get up. You think you you dying. You're like, no, nah, they like, no, nah, they got to go to <laughs> they class. They got to go to class. And then, like, I think I did. I was also, doing like a neuter, and then I did one at, like, Six or seven, and I mm-hmm. wanted ten. Those are the three, the three days. That's I did, crazy. I did three, maybe four times, three, three or four times in a night. That's great. That's crazy. Yeah, the newness is wild though, because it's like I get why you don't respect me. Right. I, if you're not I was to. eating in the cafe and somebody just started doing comedy that I didn't know, I wouldn't respect them either. Try doing a news show and you got music cues. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, you know how they have the speaker hey, set Lunch up? Hey, Lady, hit it. <laughs> it's basically, you know how they got the little speaker set up, the little yeah, tripod, yeah. speaker right here, speaker right here, yeah. mic cord to the board, yeah. and a little, one, one time they had just the steps to go to a stage. I ain't mm-hmm. had a stage, they just had some steps right there. And I used to have a, a CD with my cues on it. The CD player was behind the speaker, so my homeboy had to come over there and just do the cute, standing right by me. Right. <laughs> so I'm trying to do these music shows. He, he hit next and play. It's on like a car stereo installed in the speaker. <laughs> he sitting there hit <laughs> and pause and then just go sit down. Like, yeah. man, shout out to my boy Vince, man. He, was, he held it down a lot yeah, of, on the many funny. occasions. Because yeah. part of that music is the element of surprise. Surprise, right? You, and, like, yeah, the surprise is ruined when the when the – Man. <laughs> One guy that looks like he doesn't go to the school gets up, pull up. and starts messing with the sound equipment. <laughs> he do it like this. Oh, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. <laughs> they see you. <laughs> so, yeah, I had to go through it to, to understand what, you know. Mm-hmm. And they, to rip those shows is like a big confidence boost. It's like, I don't they, they eat coleslaw. I made them stop eating coleslaw. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like, Wait, I why? Because it was some funny shit being said. They like. 
Oh, he crazy. Oh, like, I you thought know. you like did a bit that made them not want to eat coast. No, I did a school one time in Connecticut. Uh, it was called Gateway Community College, and I tell you, it was nothing but bloods in the crowd. Hey, community colleges is not. You know, when you're performing there, this yeah, it's it's a different element. So did, so did. I'm on stage, and the campus police, uh, campus security. I don't know if he had cerebral palsy or whatever. He had the little walk. Mm-hmm. And he walked by, like, right in front of the stage while they was sitting there. I said, man, what the hell y'all did to him? They fell out. I had him after that. I was just like, I said, I don't want no smoke with y'all. Y'all are. But he came back to work after y'all yeah. did what y'all did to him. You know, so it's like you got to find those things in the room to kind of mm-hmm. break the ice a little bit. And then, then you can't get them to stop talking to you after that. They want to, they want you to right. Shit. They want you. To it's talk funny to them you. offer you cafeteria food as a grown man. You're like, no, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to shit ain't here. Anything you want, man. Like, we got you. college anything, food is designed to make you them want shit. some fruitopias. We got you. Like, anything. <laughs> I got tough. sick. I got food poisoning eating at, yeah. at the school. Yeah. I don't eat at school. Yeah. I can't eat at school. They, My stomach. Uh, I guess the, when the kitchen closed, they just like, you know, they, they said they had the chicken sandwich for me, but I guess it wasn't, you know. I think they ready. put, I heard, I've, I've heard this. I don't know if it's a rumor. They said they put some type of diuretic in the food because, so they won't, so it won't stay on their stomach. I'm like, it makes sense. You shit as soon as you eat that. Hey, food. I I made it home. I made it like it was It was in upstate New York. It was like a five-hour drive back to Brooklyn. When I got back to Brooklyn. Was, that's it, Mohawk, when it, hit was me. it Mohawk Valley Community Garden? It might have been. <laughs> Ooh, I think that was it. Yeah. Because I got in traffic going out there. The show started super late. That was part of it. Because yeah. I got stuck in Chinatown, not used to driving to New York. So oh, yeah. then me getting out of New York was crazy. It's the whole thing driving to New York. Right, you gotta right, have right. Nerves of steel, and mm-hmm. you got to just be... Your car might go be, it's going to be bumped. They're going to bump your shit. Right, They're going right. to scrape your car. No, Everybody like car got a little Friday, scrape on Friday, I got stuck. It was like, no, nah, it was crazy. Mohawk yeah. Valley. I did that school a lot of times. Mm-hmm. They got that stage in the big student center, and they got the food spots over there with all the big tables. Yeah, yeah. Got some kids in the back playing magic with trench coats on. Yes. Yep. yep. Oh, man. And they don't like to be made fun of. Oh, man. Yeah, no, they're they're going ham. Like, shut up. I... <laughs> I used to get those dudes on my side the, back in the day. Like I, I kind of was, I would kind of be cool with them. Like I, okay. I've done that too. Go to a school early and figure it's gonna be weird in the room, but I'll mm-hmm. just go around saying hi to everybody. Y'all good? Can y'all move up? We finna have a, we about to have a comedy show. It's gonna be hard for me to project back here. If you can move up, yeah. I, I'm not gonna mess with y'all. I, I, they already gave me the check. I'm fine. Just come, <laughs> just sit up here so I won't feel stupid. And they the can. magic dudes, they would kind of be cool, and I'd be like, "How do you play magic in college? Like it's like saying." <laughs> I said, I was like, man, it's like it's like playing a game to let everybody know you're a virgin. Like, what's the virgin league? <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of, I kind of like, I roast where you can kind of mm-hmm. laugh too. I kind of toast a little bit. I, I kind of do a little. That's my roast sauce. It's like I might compliment you in the roast a little bit. You know? What yeah. I'm <laughs> People assume I'm into that type of stuff. They assume I'm like, oh man. They assume I'm in jaded. anime. They, they jaded by comedians. They assume I'm in the, like all kind of different. You look nerd younger stuff. than you are too. You you feel you 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 feels like you were born in the late in the late nineties. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, those are all the anime children. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, Only mm-hmm. anime I watch is Boondocks. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah, Boondocks. Yeah. It looks dope. I just can't get into it. It's like it's after my time. You know what I'm saying? Like well. I think I was around when it was becoming popular, but it was also a choice you had to make. And I was like, I'd rather watch 106 and Park than Tsunami. That, yes, that part. That part. 106 and, and Park, just, bro. That's Rap how City. I was living my life. I'd rather watch Rap City for sure you than You would Tsunami. rather have sex with girls instead of being virgin. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that was, I don't think the, the, the time I put into Rap City helped. It didn't. I don't it didn't think give you it no helped. Sauce? You no, didn't get no sauce I don't from the think. City? I don't think those Tigger freestyles just Man, you, you know got, some got, sauce from got the city. deal done. Yeah, no. <laughs> if the head right Nelly there every night, yeah, he it, said it, that. It, but it helped you know your audience, who you were studying. You know, the female in your age bracket. You had to know what they were into. Right, and so, I do, I do, and I, you know, like a lovers and friends concert. I, I you know, the, I'm never going to be stumped at one of those for sure. Right, right, right. But at the same time, I don't, you know, I don't think, I don't, I think that I didn't see. Oh, this whole world will open up, and there will be, you know, 
it'll be socially acceptable to watch anime. No, nah, man, you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that. Was, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't see that. Right. I didn't see a Megan the Stallion coming out and being like, "I love anime." And then you know, people yeah. bringing her basic anime, and she's like, "Nah, y'all want me to watch Sailor Moon? I I watch it. It was whack. These are the shows I watch. You know, hilarious. Yeah, I think anime is just what the uh, the girls that I the the girls who do porn watch, that, or they play like they watch. <laughs> the Twitter porn. It's <laughs> like for the Twitter porn community. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just into anime and chilling. They just the have their ass up. You're like, come on, dog. But see, that's the thing. I People faking watch anime that unfathomable when I was a yep, kid. That's a like, yeah, place. not even not even possible. I didn't know black folks was going to be into the cosplay at Comic-Con like this. Come that on. Whole, that, come we on. Took, we don't took that over. They, right. They, they got a whole pocket of them cosplay right ratchet hood people that oh, love man. it I, I love that we jumping in all of it it's, it's like a uh, uh, black people doing country music like dude, we always like country music like <laughs> everybody man. grandma play country music <laughs> i didn't know you know like like Blanco brown when i was, was drawing coming. spider-man you couldn't have told me oh yeah there's gonna be a black spider-man oh you yeah. know what i'm saying uh, we like love, we me and my kids love miles morales dog. man we love him bro i get so hyped when i see like a little black kid with miles morales stuff on man my, my son kid. loves jordan ones just because yeah. of miles morales my my seven year old is into like he watches gq when they pulling out their jewelry and he watches uh <laughs> sneaker reviews and sneak when they tie dye they dot plastic dip in their sneakers mm-hmm, and all mm-hmm, that stuff mm-hmm. and he's in, he's very into like clothes and shit it's funny as okay. it's like okay these little people in my house are like little pieces of me yeah yeah <laughs> so it's like oh my he That's picks fire. out my clothes for shows he's like dad i don't think you should wear that jacket put that hat on put this okay. like he go to school with his own birch on he got his own birch says love love day f that's his Okay, that's his own birch line. That's uh, it's old blessedaf.com, official blessedaf.com. But love day wow. is what he came up with. He got in trouble. He almost got in trouble at school with it. And I was like, yeah. But I told the principal, I was like, "Did you ask him what it stands for?" And then I, and he told him, "I love the fearless." You know what I'm saying? You putting all that on the AF. Yeah. You know, but I, I you know, I will let. I let Did I, you I have a blessed AF hat on when you were talking to the yeah. principal? Yeah, I was. There. I have. <laughs> I had a jacket on. That's I think gonna I had a do it. That's on. gonna get the job done. You're not finna let my hey. kid. You're not finna not let us entrepreneur at your damn school. If your kid school. gets in trouble for wearing something, come dress like the kid, and we'll smell like weed a little bit. <laughs> they already know what's up with me. It ain't but like eight daddies up Just here. Just a anyway. little bit though. It's like not nine. It's like seven amount. black daddies up there. Just a little bit. <laughs> Shout out to all the dads out there, man. Come but on, it's man. just cool having a little person with their own personality. It's like, God, you are hilarious, bro. Man, like, that, that's funny. fire. I mean, he gets it from you. You like, like that's <laughs> one of the things. Is like, you know, Ronnie, you are, you were tapped into sneaker culture before it was a thing co opted. Like, I feel like every time oh, a Lord. comedian gets money. It's now like, they're I've been had these. Oh yeah, He's like, shut up. Right, <laughs> Ronnie was actually doing it before it, it was wasn't publicized. A documented like, thing before it was like, no, you're not gonna show my closet. I don't want to get robbed. I don't want to get robbed, <laughs> and, I, and I and I pull it when I'm pulling that out. You you you're not gonna know where all this shit coming from. I'm just right. pulling this shit out, and I would have merch to go with my joys. Like I had mm-hmm. a couple shirts. I'm bringing back to it. Had a uh, I had a big ass number four, but I told the uh, the, the t shirt dude, I said, put the elephant print in that bitch, and I put I play for keeps, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that shit went with the Jordan threes when they dropped, and I did a couple other try. I tried I tried yeah. a lot of things with merch, man. I was just I saw that everybody had DVDs, and I was like, DVDs is on the way out, and I don't want to carry that shit. And uh, yeah, I remember paying for whatever the hell you I wanted. Can't to in crack a t shirt. Carrie Crack a t shirt. I had a t shirt that said I am freak I am effing hilarious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My homeboy said, Man, every time I wear that, girls just walk up to me. I was like, that's the goal. Just to have somebody talk. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I had yeah. the Jeez, I hate you a lot shirt. That Jeez, that went I crazy. Hate you a lot. Those went yeah. crazy. And then I had yeah. the fat jump man with my, my, mm-hmm. with my tip mm-hmm. fade mm-hmm. out with the microphone. And the blessed AF is still going. I got human AF. Hey, hey. You know what I'm saying? I got a couple tattoos yeah. with the human AF on hey. now, but I made up human AF for, during the protest. I right, was like, I right. need something to wear in the airport. I had the black AF, and then you were like, nah, we switch it up, we human. And I, was like, <laughs> I did black AF, too. I put out, yeah, I put out black yeah. AF. It was before the show. Yeah. No cap, no cap. Mm-hmm. I had that shit before mm-hmm. the show. But, uh, uh, yeah, we do. I did the human with the black power fist. You know, it just, I see merch is another way to kind of 
get the get the joke off or get the get the message out because you know yeah t-shirts go further than you will ever go like mm-hmm. the brat wear my shirt all the time on her show and uh, wow. a couple of growing up hip-hop people brianna okay shout out to her man shout out to tip t i wear that blessed af bucket all the time man. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm on back order for them things right now people man i'm, I'm getting cut all your blessed af buckets coming too i gotta okay. i got emails <laughs> they on the way man i'm backed up because I, I get my my hats done i always get this thread uh glow in the dark print Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The glow in the dark thread is like I my homeboy who do him, he go find he got a plug at Leeds <laughs> somewhere wow. that Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to my boy uh Rob, HBCU Love, man, partner with the hats and stuff. So yeah, bro. I'm just out here hustling. I'm, I'm just glad to still be maintaining and I can still pay my money with joke pay my bills with joke money and just Come and on. the pandemic was the worst it could be, and we survived that. I'm mm-hmm, like, oh, I can mm-hmm. do anything. Because, you know, I lost a lot of money on them schools, brother. My calendar, Man. we we talk about a lot, like almost six figures in loss just Ooh. on the calendar. Ooh. But my agents were so good. They had, you know, they had their own kind of Mac and Showcase on Zoom. And I was like one of the first ones to do it. And I did a lot of Zoom shows. Did some Zoom schools. I got Roy roasted Matt the Zoom Rife. Show. I did a Zoom uh, school. You know. Shout yeah. out to Matt Rife, man. I've been things, knowing that cat since he was 14. Things went awry. You know, you can always make fun of somebody's room because they in their room. What what I used to do is when, when I did the Zooms, I would make everybody cut their cameras on, cut right. the mic on. right. And if somebody want to roast, we can see you. But right. I got Unless it was you got a show. A dog I had or a baby, turn that mic on. I had a show with Darren, and uh, I think Darren and Tyler. Darren was waiting in the waiting room, and I was on. And this dude came. On. He said, "Oh, big nose, cock out of that nigga." I said, "I started laughing." I was like, "Turn your camera on, lame man!" But I, like I turned all the way around, and then Darren popped up. Who the fuck was that? Like everybody was like this, trying to fight on Zoom. And uh, RJ was like, he would text me, "Hey man, chill out." I said, man, "Fuck these kids." <laughs> we already frustrated about the right, pandemic, right, right? right? You go show me. Let's see your dirty I ass took house. Out time, people don't understand. I got to go in the other room. I got to go in the kitchen and, and, and set the camera, set, right. the, set the laptop up, mm-hmm, so you can I can stand mm-hmm, up and feel mm-hmm. and not feel stupid trying right. to do dorm jokes, right? And every you know, and I I, I just realized how we turned up online. Like I, I remember Ali did like club quarantine. He would do stand up on his live, and mm-hmm. people would donate to the YouTube. I mean to the Cash App, and yeah. The comedians was adapted, bro. Oh, <laughs> we was adapted. He to the got bypass. me one day with the like. He was on live and he did. He does a bit, but I don't realize he's doing a bit. I'm thinking he's telling a story. And he's like, if you want to hear the rest, go on YouTube. And then his his comedy special was on YouTube, and I was like, oh man, he got me. Yeah, I didn't even know this was a bit. Yeah. Oh man, I gotta see how how this ends. This is crazy. Ali is one of the ones, bro. Mm-hmm. He's like, he, shout out to that's one of them. I've been doing Ali probably since oh, 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 three, oh, two. Okay. Ali used to have locks on top. Ali used to mm-hmm. have locks, mm-hmm. and he was in a little Kiki video. He's in a lot of Houston, Houston videos. Like he is yeah. Houston. Like, yeah. and his story is so dope that mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. so all my partners that I went to jail was like, man. Well, you see Ali, man. Tell him that Mexican got no boost joke, bro. Bro. Hey. And man. Ali is not, he's not, he's not a tall guy. He's not a big guy. He's, he doesn't act like he's big or nothing, but he is a solid, His he's a grown ass man. He's, a, he's yeah. a man. And yeah. I remember we was in Houston standing outside the comedy club, me, him, Bill Bellamy. Somebody got to shoot. He's, Ronnie, get back. I said, man, get your little ass. Like, <laughs> I need right here to me. Ronnie, get back. I got me. <laughs> like, he's very well respected. Like, when I come, when I'm in Houston and I call him, man, he'll, man, he has everybody run down on me that mm-hmm. I need. If I need something, they they come out of nowhere. He'd be like, man, Lee told me to bring you this. Da, 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 da. Man. So, shout out to Ali, man. Those, those OGs who teach me how to, teach me how to be like, those guys, that's that's who I kind of pattern my uh, c- career off. Like as an older, as a grown up, like you mm-hmm. know, I'm in, I'm, I'm forty plus now. I can say it. I don't care. I don't care. My, my age on Okay. But uh, Ali Sadiq, Rodney Perry, you know what I'm saying? Like Tony Roberts, uh, and people like KP. Like he, you know, he's a producer, executive producer, <laughs> manager. But he's mm-hmm. like he knows how to let the talent be the talent and let people shine yeah. how they got to shine. So that's kind of like what I take it to. Like if I see a new comic or something, I just go out. I just say, you know, Hey, yo, you got to set, you know, it's like, especially when I see mm-hmm. somebody that just pop online, they skits going crazy. I'm like, Hey, you need a set, bro. 
Like, I remember I hit Drewski immediately. When I saw him yeah. going crazy, way before he started going really crazy, mm. I was like, you got to set, you do a stand-up, you should. If you don't, you sh- I can help you if you want to, but you should be ready because yeah. it's coming. It's coming. Because I'm just, under the, my thing, I don't want nobody from Atlanta to not be funny. <laughs> That's the right. simplest thing. It's right. like, I just want my city to be strong, right. man. When we go out of town and everybody's mm-hmm. like, what if Atlanta things come? Cause we, when we go to LA, they be like, Y'all, you staying out here? You you, you live here now? Like, mm-hmm. you got to be like, yeah. Because mm-hmm. they'll steal your jokes. <laughs> 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 yeah, I moved out here. I got two condos. <laughs> Um, Ronnie, Ronnie, what's next for you? Anything you want to tell the people? Uh, the apartments is is what we doing right now. Uh, working on apartments too. I think I'm not don't, don't I'm not letting the cat out the bag. Okay. But, uh, uh, we we we're on a roll with Desi Banks and um, I'm I'm doing my own tour, man. We um, got to start on January 11th, man. That's gonna be. I haven't been back there in a long time. Shout out to um uh, OG Clay, rest in peace. He booked me my first, my very first headliner gig like out of town like a big comedy club was the wow. Stardome and it was a uh, it was right with Hoover Tip, Alabama Hoover Alabama when mm-hmm. Tip went to jail remember when Tip went to jail the mm-hmm. BT Awards mm-hmm. and he started working with Duval and they were killing on the road and he had Benji Brown and he brought me mm-hmm. to the Stardome next Grand Hustle presents Ronnie Jordan we sold that thing out and, and okay, I had been going like I had five hundred seats. Yeah, we, like that. Clay Clay was no joke, bro. Clay yeah. I have a street team going that town before and. But it, and the thing about um, the start of is Bruce would have you go to the radio station, go to the news channel. And I was like mm-hmm. going, my big ass going to do the weather. I'm blocking the whole shit. I don't know what, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing all the promotion. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the live stuff, but he had already did all the groundwork. And uh, I had built a relationship with Bruce after that. I was coming back, you know, once or twice a year, but I haven't been back in so long as, as the, uh, you know, as the social media comedians, just the new influencers start selling it out so fast. Mm-hmm. I just haven't been in the mix because I was going away doing colleges. So it was like, yeah. you know, you kind of lose that comedy club edge sometimes when you're mm-hmm. doing a lot of colleges. But Steve Hofstetter calls them the golden handcuffs. He says NACA is the golden handcuffs. Like you got to that's funny. Choose one or the other. Right. So I kind of now I'm back into trying to get in the mix of these clubs, man. But I've been going around with Desi and uh, like a lot of the other. Like I think I, I ain't been able to be Simone yet, but uh, a lot of those younger comics, I go on the road with them, man, because I have a good time and I learn how to do the business. I find out what these mm. door deals talk about, mm. what the what the uh, promoter splits and all this other mm. shit. That I was just focusing on ripping, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. And uh, you know, I sell my merch. I get I get busy on the merch, and uh, I just you know I'm trying to uplift the next wave of funny people you know what i'm saying and i feel the, you and we get back to the, hopefully after this uh everything's resolved we'll be back to the miss pat show mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh we did season four already. we were supposed to start shooting the day of the writer's strike so i was Man. i had my mind already ready for them good writer checks mm-hmm, in the summer i was mm-hmm. like oh it's my i might be my, my shirt might be off this summer i might have like give me a couple okay. of links you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like give me some more chains and summer, yeah. but you know had to adapt it you know we we out here on the purpose chaser tour and uh uh haha mafia haha mafia haha mafia shout out to the haha mafia man t.i put together some comedians he started his comedy journey and uh i think kato was the first person to put him on stage but i was always being is he like you should do stand up bro i think he want to do some one man stage play or whatever but he mm. want to do the steps you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. go to the open mics and do bad and try to do good and, and, and he he figured it out bro his, his shit yeah. is funny as hell now okay he was funny already but the structure and all he cutting all the bush the fact yeah and he get to those stories that we want to know about mm-hmm. his family because mm-hmm. he's already polarizing he's already been right in the light we already know him a little bit and mm-hmm. we want to know the other shit like he got jokes about King that's so goddamn funny, bro. And this Man. is like his. This is not Ti the rapper. This, this is Ti Harris the dad. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And he's coming from that dad perspective, and it's hilarious because we're the new dads is like the new dads got sauce. We know what the hell going on. We might smoke mm-hmm. a joint or two, but we are parents. Yeah, <laughs> we are damn parents. And he we've been going around the country. We're gonna be in uh, but that's the Maryland November the seventh. <laughs> November seventh, Bethesda, Maryland, Ha Ha Mafia. Let me shout out the whole Ha Ha Mafia. We got Erica okay. Dutchess, the first lady queen of the Mellow. Got Dav Green, the young killer. We got Tyler Chronicles, the PN, you know what I'm saying? We got Kate of the OG. And we got myself, you know, Ronnie Jordan. I'm, I'm kinda I'm one of them one of them ambassadors. I'm a, you know, I'm one of them people in Atlanta that you kinda if you don't know me, it's fine, but if you do, they like if you ever see me on stage, you like 
Oh no, he yeah. Because <laughs> it's like I don't feel like I've I've got the notoriety or whatever the hell that people want. I I just like that I can pay my bills by telling jokes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and never, I don't mm-hmm. got to work for nobody. Come and on. I don't got to take no shit off nobody. My, my dad be smiling because his name is Ronnie Jordan, so he just be looking at me like, "You doing this shit, ain't you? Wow, like, you right? You damn right, I'm doing it." So yeah, man. The next thing is is my my tour. Uh, Pump his merch out, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna do a higher quality uh blessed AF line for big dudes. We're gonna do some luxury pieces for big okay. dudes, you know what I'm saying? Some leathers and shit. Shout out to my boy leathers. Rob. Yeah, shout out to my boy Rob. We're working on some leather shit, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm getting some leathers made, man. I'm getting me some leather shit made, you know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. I got you, Rob. Don't worry about it. Rob Hayes, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hook you up. Gonna, All right. You, Cause you put yeah. the shit on. They, Rob Hayes hey. is very sneakily hey. one of the freshest people out here. Hey, when, you, when you went on Fallon. With them Jordan fours in that suit, but I was on, I was man. in front. I stood in front of the TV like this. I was like this. Hey, I, I, and uh, I mean, you had the gray on. With the gray was with the cement. I said, okay, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob, Rob with Marty McFly on them real quick. Hey, hey man, man. The hey, man. Fours. I love it, man. I, that's my favorite shit. I love to see like, especially when you put out clips and stuff, man. That's my favorite shit. Like, you be writing and you. You elevated it. I see you writing on like the SB awards and shit mm-hmm, like that. But mm-hmm. I was like, man, that's the kid from the goddamn <laughs> from yeah. Georgia, from UGA. Yep. So yeah, I just remember the Kitar Rob. When well, you had that Kitar, hey, the Kitar era. That was an era. Do they that know about the Kitar era? Does this? I don't this, know. This if the they inconsistent know. It's podcast. Been no. Brought up. It's. Been, I guess but he it's has the Kitar. Yeah. That shit. You got to pull that back out. <laughs> and man. the Kitar era was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that was. I crazy. like it, bro. I, I, I think I like any original stuff you know mm-hmm, what i'm saying mm-hmm. like i love that shit bro it's like yeah. man, we got we got the best job in the world man because we do i, I we see really billionaires do. hate their job like these motherfuckers be wanting to be us so bad there's a lot yeah. of people that wish they could do this stand-up that's why everybody's funny in the comments on social media so mm-hmm. and this is this is motherfucker who might be scared to go to the mailbox but they be hilarious online and in the comments but like, yeah. it's very few that can hold somebody's attention for over an hour. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, or 20 mm-hmm. minutes or 15 minutes, however long it is. Yeah. I think we're some fortunate people. And I think it's kind of like we're preaching a little bit because it's like you, you bring, a, you bring a, a little happy, bit. You bring in a happier time. I get a lot of DMs about people like, you know, I see them on YouTube too. Like, like this man's comedy got me out of a dark place, especially during mm. the pandemic. I was coming on live just talking shit. Yeah. To, I did my entrepreneur check ins. I would just let people shout out their businesses and stuff like that. And really, I'm just on there wearing my merch so you can see it the whole gotcha. time. <laughs> but yeah, I would just let people shout, shout out their businesses. And uh, I've I made a lot of good relationships like that. And uh, if y'all got a clothing line and it's ugly, stop sending it to me. Hey. Jesus, you ever see like an ugly t shirt line with like a lot of words on it? You'd be like, bro, this is not fly. I mean, you know, it, it's one of them things where if like, you got glitter on your shit, if you got glitter on your shirts, just stop. Stop them. Don't yeah. stop production. Right. The glitter is a bit much, but you never know. I can't I can't put any parameters on anything because I've seen everything possibly work. Yeah, you're right. Work. Right. Cause they stealing like, money. That gallery department is stealing you, money. If you, right? They taking money. I can't be mad at the cap. I got to figure out how to charge more. Yeah. Cause he got. They got these hats. They three hundred dollars. Right. <laughs> and they just say gallery department. It's the same base hat. It's the same hat. Yeah. Gallery department on the t-shirt play. I'm like, Tremaine put cotton on everything, and then they just reefs. like and cotton reefs. Six hundred dollars for I'm like, guys. yo, I should I be offended? I'm, that's what I'm like. And when he told the story, I was like, I get it, but it's still... I get it, but I feel like if anybody else did it, we we if Gucci would, did the it. NWACP we would be, would be hey, upset. Gucci after that also, after that blackface shit. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, I don't know. It, it's weird. It's Why weird. are we celebrating the cotton reef? Why are we right? I think I, I take I took it as like we took the shit back to John. I thought to it was like a with. cloud. I didn't know until you found out. You were like, oh, I God. went out. I'm so glad it wasn't in my closet because I I'm conflicted. I I see them because we go to these boutiques where we stop and I can't fit the shit, but I'm looking right because I design clothes. Well, yeah, I, I mean, design I'm you know that side of, of things. I'm, as I'm well. looking to see what's the hot anymore. shit. I'm like, okay, this is the hot shit. This is six hundred bucks for this. Mm-hmm. It's a plain Levi's jacket. And it's got the but everybody the at the story BT, is what you buy. Hip hop awards had it on, yeah. And then it's yeah. like Fat Joe had on the cotton reef. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how 
I feel like I it's, is, it, is it we taking it back? Are we taking the cotton back? And I also, guess. Also, well, we just, let's talk about reparations for a minute. Who the fuck owns cotton anyway? The touch the field of cotton still has commercials. Yeah. And they got money. The they fabric to, they of my lives, to, they I bet. They check. I bet it's the fabric It's the fabric of, of, of my life. family's life. Yeah. And my great my great great great, great grandma. Some, some lives and I some tweet, fabric. I tweet cotton every couple months. Be like, we, you still owe us a check. I, yeah. It's a, it's they have a Twitter, the cotton, the fabric of our lives. One of them, I be tweeting them like, yo. Nori Davis <laughs> has a funny joke about sending in some cotton instead of his student loan payment. Hilarious. <laughs> I got a joke about that. Uh, I took a, I, when I was in Austin at South by Southwest. I mm-hmm. took a bike taxi and I said it was this white lady, hey. and she was like, I got my unicorn. <laughs> and I said it was cool until Austin we got to a hill. Wild. I said until we got to a hill, her calf muscle was twerking, and she was looking at me for relief. And I was like, "Nope, slavery." Austin's the only city where you can pay to get on the bus in the back door. Oh, that's crazy. that's trust. That is true. Everywhere else in this country, you got to pay at the front by yeah, we a don't person. believe you. That's like, uh, yeah. pay me when you feel like it. No, yeah, hell no. Austin and the and the bus costs a dollar. When I was in New York, the bus cost 11 quarters. I took a subway for the first time in New York about two weeks ago, and I was like, I've been coming here 20 years, and I ain't never got on this motherfucker. And then I, I – It's so convenient. It's, but I was so used to going to whatever school I had to, the hotel, go mm-hmm, there and park. Mm-hmm. And when you get to New York, you just park your car. You know what I'm saying? I was driving my van around New York trying to go to comedy nights and parking that shit. I parked it in Times Man, Square to go to Caroline's. Stress. <laughs> I was so like, naive, I wasn't even stressed. I was just like, all right. <laughs> New York driving, you'd have to, like, once the GPS says a minute, it's like, all right, now I just got to find a place to park. The, the worst part was when it says uh, three miles away, and it'll say 29 minutes. you like, hold on. Yeah. It's what? Yeah. Huh? Because <laughs> it's red. It's red the whole way. Yeah, I was like, Uber is crazy. Then the inflation on the Uber would be crazy. You like, mm-hmm. oh, you could get paid on the Uber doing uh, out here. Hey! Yeah, yeah, man. That's why I've been renting cars when I come home because the Uber's so expensive. Uber's high, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uber's high. You might get an Atlanta Uber. He might have a Hellcat. You like, bro? How the hell? Hey. <laughs> you paying this car note with Uber? I like when the Uber driver's from here. Yeah, me too. It is. It, it sucks when the Uber driver. You get in the Uber and then they. They have no clue. They can't, you know, like one day I I got in an Uber and the guy, I got him to drop me off at the airport and he was like, man, this airport is busy today, isn't it? I was like, oh, he don't even get no busy airport every house? day. You don't even get no airport What are you trips? talking about? Oh, fam. I called an Uber it's driver. It's the week of Thanksgiving. Yeah, I got an Uber. The news just has stock footage of people sleeping there. I don't even think they really bring cameras anymore. Right. It's how we, they outside. Yeah. The line is by back, wrapped around baggage claim to go in and pre-check. Right. Pre-check, when pre-check is packed, you know your day is done. You're like, oh, God damn it. I'm always telling the Uber driver, like, the GPS going to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you the easy way. Right. Because you're not going like to make all these turns. You're not going to, yeah, I'm yeah. going to get you on 166. Just trust I, me. I, and then I hate it when it's an Uber driver, like, that doesn't speak any English or, like, mm-hmm. little, it's the worst. And But let me tell you what's worse than the Uber driver. That you ever get in a car with somebody that you've been knowing, but you never drove with them before? And they yeah. drive fast? like. Shout out to my boy Chef Matt. We in Long Beach, man. We me and Tyler go up to do that Keep Your Distance show. Okay. So Chef Matt sends a truck. Long Beach to where Keep Your Distance is or was long drive. No but matter where we there, it was we were, or we were, is, we were there long uh, drive. Uh, day before. So he wanted us okay. to shoot like this, this cannabis cooking show pilot or whatever. He sent mm-hmm. a suburban to come get us. He was like, "I'm gonna take y'all back." When I tell you this man had that goddamn Honda Accord wide open on the 405. Hey, because he had to go all the way back. He had to take y'all, and then he had to go all the way back. No, he so, he, got, he sent the truck to get us, and then he took us back. That's okay, what, yeah. And he but was then playing, he had to go back. Bro, After he, he took y'all back, he had to go back. He, yeah, he had to go back. <laughs> and, and it was a Honda. He was thinking about the ride back so look, while he I'm was taking Honda, y'all. I mean, when I sit out, I kind of open my legs up and relax. <laughs> My my damn big ass thigh touching hey, the door, man. so the door light hey. coming on, so I got to squeeze in. And I said, damn, my hips are spread. I'm in here goddamn scared because he started hey. driving so fast. And Tyler in the back. And I said, bro, because you know how it's an awkward time with somebody driving and you don't want to tell them so mm-hmm, loud. I said, mm-hmm. my boy. Because he had like XL radio play. I said, bro, please, I don't want to die to the St. Lunatics. 
Like, <laughs> I cannot crash to batter up. <laughs> I, <laughs> this shit, I saw the scene. I was like, yeah. Do -do -boop -boop -boo -do. I'm like, bro, I cannot die to this shit. I can't die you know to Murphy Lee verse. I can't die to Murphy <laughs> Lee and, and Ali, man. Shout out to Murphy Lee, man. He me over. I gotta have him on my show, man. You gotta get Murphy Lee on here, bro. I would love to get Murphy Lee. Murphy, Murphy Lee in Atlanta, bro. Come by the show, man. That yeah. would be incredible. Yeah, um, I, could, I just didn't want to die the better up. Ronnie, this this has <laughs> been the inconsistent podcast. Thanks so much time, for coming man. on. I hope you had a good time. It comes out whenever it comes out. You guys know the drill. Yes, uh, shout out to the big tippers on P Patreon. Big tip. All the people out there. Um, you know, on the Discord showing the sky pics and whatnot. I mean, so the Discord, do you is it is Discord like Instagram or can you put videos up there or you gotta send your Patreon to there or uh it's it's like uh you can be invited. Uh sometimes in the description I put the invite link and then people can, you know, come on. Sometimes they have an expiration date, sometimes they don't. But yeah, it's it's linked to Patreon, Discord. but I'm not really sure how to get straight from the you know i think everybody that's on the patreon is on the discord but yeah. there's also some other people on the discord i just need this because i think i think instagram is getting too it's it's it is it's like third lunch it's well, like the popular lunch room discord is for for this podcast is like uh you know it's kind of like people can talk about the show also yes yeah, so i need to centralize i reference people. if i reference like a video or if i reference a song or something i put it in like there's a reference section oh, that's hard. and so yeah you you customize can we make, can we make an atlanta want. playlist for these people we can make an atlanta playlist for Man, the people y'all sure. gotta listen to kilo ali yeah. cocaine yeah uh baby baby yeah uh, also, cocaine, you know, only available on, the right way is only available on YouTube. Really? He re-recorded. Oh, Kilo I, hate re -record. <laughs> Kilo. I hate the re-record. I hate the re-record. It made me itch. I hate them, bro. You you know, I need nineteen-year-old kilos cocaine. I don't need forty-nine-year-old kilo. Yeah, uh, I love kilo. I lead to death, uh -huh. but. He had a few jail stints that all his music was getting better every time he came out. He would record a lot of shit and go to jail. Like, first, he was the first rapper to go to jail a lot. Like, Sammy Sam, too. He made, like, the greatest hits. Yeah, I you need to say, have the that. last five years. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's not on here. He might have took it down. Yeah, Kilo Ali. Um, also, you need to have Little Will looking for Nicky. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's one of my favorite songs. Uh, shit. I'm making you play this right goddamn now. <laughs> Co-Ed, Roll With Me. Yeah. Um, also, uh, what's some good R&B on there? There's a remix of this song with T.I. That's T.I.'s first, fa that's his first paid feature. That's crazy. But my homegirl, Bianca, in the group went to my high school. And she used to go really? with my boy. She used to go with my boy, uh, Trio, Amir. They used to go okay. together. Yeah, this this they say they never released this. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's streamable. I know it's streamable now, but they they just released it. This Ti first paid verse. This would have went. This would have went. That's KP KP Clay. Wow. Also, I don't know if it's on the streaming platform. I just put it on my page. I'll find it on YouTube. Added crew, dope boy, fresh. <laughs> Yeah, dope boy. boy fresh, dope boy, dope boy, yeah. dope boy, dope crew, boy, dope boy fresh. fresh. I had He's was, so fresh. It was a time in the city when mm -hmm. that was out, man. That was around the twenty fours time. Yeah, but yeah. Attic crew, um, a lot of those. Pastor Troy for show. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Vice versa. Miracle. Rhonda. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I like the B sides. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the Atlanta B sides is my the favorite. Atlanta B sides. The Atlanta B sides, bro. The B sides from the A. Let me tell you, being my wife's favorite song. You, you don't judge me out there. Young Jeezy, all we do. Okay, man, that's how I That was like before we had kids. She might ride out of town with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Boy, this is when I get remarried. I'm gonna, we're gonna do our first dance. Gonna be to this. <laughs> With her parents there and everything. Hey man, somebody made Jeezy mad. So the like, Jeezy came with it with this boy. TM one oh three. TM one oh three, he went crazy. Yeah. He went crazy. 
Also, DC, come by I got another show. song I'll for read you your too. book. Come by the show. PSC, uh, T.I. is on Urban Legend Limelight with the whole PSC. That okay. was my jam, bro. Oh, I think it was an Urban Legend or Trap Music. It was on Urban Legend, I think. But Limelight, man, that was my, boy, that was my ride. Because, you know, I was in the car a lot of these years. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And that you mm-hmm. had to have that CD book. And you have, oh, I used to make me a CD. You know, those data CDs with a bunch of songs on them? Yeah. Man, yeah, I, I used to have a lot of that stuff. I still play a lot of this stuff to the day, man. I play a lot of UGK still, mm-hmm. a lot of Outkast. You, you picked me up one time in in Charlotte, and then we rode to Charleston. Yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those. I wanted to sleep, but I also wanted to keep you up. Yeah, <laughs> so I was, was I like, probably tired. Yeah. I I know my role is to to help yeah, yeah, Ronnie stay awake. But if also, you was driving, I'm going to sleep. I but was, also <laughs> like. I need to sleep right yeah, now. Yeah, we was yeah. at NACA so early, bro. Yeah. We was t- <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, man. Sheesh. Ronnie, thanks for coming by the show. Man, Come by anytime. It. Shout out for to y'all, sure. man. Y'all yeah. keep supporting Rob Hayes, man. He's, he's Bay's High and Leather Zone, UGA Zone. You know what I'm saying? Like, when y'all see him, y'all see us, man. It's like, it's like cornbread and red beans and rice, man. It's, it's going to always be a good, good time. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, shit. I am early for boys. I can probably do my drops for, to start on, too. Yeah, I got to get, like...